Out front now, former special, uh, former counsel to the U.S. Assistant Attorney General for National Security, Kerry Cordero, and former senior counsel to Ken Starr for the Whitewater investigation, Paul Rosenzweig. So, Paul, let me start with you. Um, the White House has been subpoenaed, Rudy Giuliani, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, Office of Management and Budget. Um, it, it, it's widening uh, the Pentagon. Um, and it is clear that the response is stall and delay. So ultimately, uh, who does that help more, Democrats or the president coming into an election year? Well, I think the president thinks it, it assists him, but I think in an odd way, it's actually going to wind up helping the Democrats uh, in the following way. Uh, they're going to make a case that the president is stonewalling everything and refusing to cooperate in any way, manner, shape, or form. So Article 1 of the Articles of Impeachment is going to be about uh, the Ukraine call, and Article 2 is a, going to be about his obstruction of justice, his perversion of the uh, processes of law, and his refusal to abide by lawful subpoenas from the Congress. Uh, so I think he's actually going to short-circuit the process, and this is going to go more quickly than they expect. And do, would you agree, Carrie, that that can make it go more quickly, even as the whole goal, right, is to, to slow it down, as uh, Democrats would use the formal word obstruct? I don't know if it'll go more quickly. I do think that the um, I do think that the the Democrats that are leading the impeachment inquiry do need to think about focusing the investigation because they really do have somewhat of a timeline here. The speaker has said that she wants to try to wrap this up. I think by the end of the calendar year, we are in a campaign year, and so there are political reasons to try to not meld this into the the heightened period of the 2020 campaign. Right. And so if they are on an expedited timeline, I do think they it would benefit the impeachment process to focus on the most important witnesses. So for example, the fact that they quickly, in the House Democrats, that they quickly called the State Department and former State Department representatives who were specifically involved in these conversations, um, making the deal on behalf of the president with the government of Ukraine, I think those people and the fact they called them quickly is important. But I do think they need to, it would be helpful to them to yeah. focus who they're calling for witnesses and what documents they really need. There's a lot of evidence already out there. They don't need a whole lot more. I mean, I guess that is the question, uh, you know, Paul. The bottom line is I understand that, you know, you just heard the congresswoman there from a district, right, that had been Republican. She flipped to Democrat. So she's trying to walk the line of I support an inquiry. I want more information. Well, of course, that's what you should do. Uh, but it does seem uh, that uh, that a lot of people have reached a conclusion of what is right and what is wrong based on the information the entire American public has, which is the transcript of that phone call. Well, that's right. And it's not just the transcript, of course. It's the telephone calls and text messages that exactly, the Ukrainian yeah, the one ambassadors yeah. have, have exchanged. Um, uh, I think with Carrie that the facts are very clear, and I agree with her completely, that the best witnesses here are the ones who are not going to listen to the White House's order to withhold evidence, people like uh, former Ambassador Volker, people like Ambassador T Bill Taylor, who I'm sure will respond to any subpoena with alacrity. Uh, I think that by working on these two tracks, by sending subpoenas that the White House routinely refuses to honor, and taking testimony from people who are willing witnesses, the, the House can move as quickly as they need to. So, so Carrie, uh, just a couple of moments ago, and we don't, we don't even yet have this sound in, but there, the president was uh, just yelled some questions by reporters. And what they were yelling uh, was, did you mean what you said when you called on China to investigate the Bidens, which, of course, we know he did publicly the other day, right? Um, and, and he doesn't answer. Another reporter follows up. Mr. President, were you joking when you suggested China look into the Bidens? And he just says, thank you all very much, right? And of course, he had publicly said China should look into the Bidens. Now, the reason the reporters asked those questions, uh, actually, it just came in. So let me play it. Everyone can hear it. Out that way. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you all very much. No interest in answering it. And Carrie, the reason that's significant is because he said what he said, right? Which is, hey, China, you should be investigating the Bidens. And his defenders, his Republican defenders, who are trying to say that that would be okay, are saying it's okay uh, because he didn't mean it, because he was joking. This is the excuse they provided for him. Here they are. You watched what the president said. He's not saying China's investigate. I doubt if the China comment was serious, to tell you the truth. You really think he was serious about thinking that China's going to investigate uh, 
the Biden family. I don't think it's a real request. I think, again, I think he did it to gig you guys. So they gave him an out, Carrie. Reporters just asked him, and he did not take that out. He didn't take it back because he said it. It's such a garbage argument to say, oh, we're supposed to believe some things the president says, but we're not supposed to believe other things. The fact of the matter is that the Mueller report showed that he said, Russia, if you're listening, and then hours later, Russia actually conducted a cyber activity to try to affect the 2016 election. We know that privately on a phone call with the president of Ukraine, he asked for a, quote, favor uh, in the context of a discussion over defense and defense purposes, defense, defense purchases, excuse me, and security assistance to Ukraine. That was a private conversation that became public. And so now he is trying to uh, say in public what he says in private as well. There's no reason that we shouldn't take what he says seriously. And we can't have somebody who is in the office of the presidency and the commander in chief whose words don't mean anything. All right. Thank you both very much. I appreciate your time.